Hi, I'm Brent, your Crown Product Specialist, and I am back here at the Crown Labs to discuss with you those five key features that make a, an effective rust protection product. So again, just to quickly recap, number one, an effective rust protection product, it has to be able to create that protective barrier. Number two, it has to be the right viscosity. Number three, it has to have the ability to displace moisture. Number four, it has to be self-healing. And number five, it has to be able to be safely applied to the electronics of your vehicle. So the point that we're going to discuss today though is the importance of viscosity. It, it is so important that when you're choosing a rust protection product that you choose one with the right viscosity. A, an effective rust protection product has to be able to travel anywhere where moisture goes. Moisture on metal is what causes corrosion and it has to be able to get into the hidden areas and spot welds and seams of your vehicle to protect it properly. And so the experiment that we're gonna show you today is going to demonstrate how important viscosity is to an effective rust protection product. And something else this experiment is gonna show you, it's gonna show you the importance of being able to displace moisture. Just something I quickly want to address, there are many different rust protection products that are out there. And Crown, we're not in this to bash anybody else's product. But what we want to show you, again, is the, is the point of this video, how important it is that you choose one with the right viscosity. And, and we're going to show you this test. It's affectionately called the steel wool test. Uh, now, if you take a piece of steel wool, you can see very clearly, this is a piece of metal that has many different nooks and crannies. And so for a rust protection product to really be able to protect it or help prevent that corrosion process from starting, it has to be able to get and reach in between all of these nooks and crannies. So we're gonna take some of the products here, as well as the crown product, and we're gonna spray it on, of the, on these uh, pieces of steel wool. We're gonna place it in a jar full of water, and we're gonna let them sit over time, and we're gonna let you take a look at the results. So to conduct this experiment, we've actually decided to raise the stakes. And what we've done, as you can see, is we pre-soaked the steel wool with water. Now, why do we do this? Well, it's to illustrate uh, one of the other key features of an effective rust protection product. It needs to have that ability to displace the moisture that's already there on the surface. So by doing the test this way, this is gonna more accurately depict the real world scenario of rust protection on your vehicle whether it be the relative humidity of where you're living, whether you're driving through rainstorms, snow, through puddles, there's all sorts of moisture that is already attaching to the metal of your vehicle. And for a rust protection product to be effective, it actually has to have the ability to penetrate through that moisture and lift that moisture off of the surface of your vehicle and create that protective barrier and preventing it from coming back in contact with the surface. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each piece of steel wool, we're gonna place it here into these jars, one of them, we're gonna leave completely untreated. The next, we're gonna, the next two, we're gonna apply competitive products. And then the last one, we're gonna apply the crown product. So let's take a look at what happens. Okay, so now we're gonna take our samples and we're gonna place them here in these containers full of just regular tap water. So we have our untreated steel wool, competitive product number one, competitive product number two, and last but not least, this is the crown. And if you notice, in the way that it's dripping off of the steel wool, Again, uh, just take note of the difference in the viscosity. So now we're gonna leave these samples. We've set up a time-lapse camera. We're gonna take a look in a few days. So we're back here at the Crown Labs to look at the conclusion of our experiment. So now it's been about three weeks 
almost a month that these samples have sit in the water. And so let's take a look at each sample. We've got sample number one where no protection was applied. And as you can see, the metal is clearly compromised. Uh, there's a large amount of sediment at the bottom of that tank. We take a look at sample number two. It's held up reasonably well, but you can still see a significant amount of sediment at the bottom of the tank. Now you will notice that the water level is higher in uh, sample number two. It seems that an oily film has been, has been created at the top of the tank, and that seems to be preventing the water from evaporating. Number three, if you take a look, close look at this steel wool, you're gonna see that there's a thick product on the actual steel wool, but it clearly hasn't created that protective barrier, and that is why there's a significant amount of corrosion. Now, if we take a look at the final sample, this being the crown product, you'll notice that the water is completely clear. Uh, there is absolutely no corrosion on that sample. And again, why is that? What was the point of this experiment? Well, it was to highlight two key features of an effective rust protection product. Number one, viscosity. Of the product has to be thin enough to be able to creep to get into all the nooks and crannies of that steel wool and on each individual strand to create that protective barrier. And if you remember, we did something else. We wet each piece of steel wool first before putting it in the tank and before applying the product. So that second key feature, it has to have the ability to displace moisture. And that's exactly what the Crown product has done.